Hey, Butterbot, you look kind of depressed. Is everything okay? Here's your butter. Well. What are you looking at? Oh, what's the point? I'm a huge fan of the show Rick and Morty, and one of the most iconic characters, despite only having a couple minutes of total screen time, is Rick's butter delivery robot. I've seen some awesome 3D renderings of realistic butter bots that helped inspire this build, some 3D printed butter bots, and even a BattleBot butter bot, but I wanted to machine one from metal in actual scale. So here he is. <laughs> he took a few months to build, and he was actually completed at a gas station halfway to Maker Faire, but he did make it there in one piece, and he got to do some fun stop motion work once he got home. The first step necessary to build a butter bot is of course to design a butter bot. The challenge is that the animators for Rick and Morty don't need to draw things that are real and buildable. They just draw what looks good. The butter bot is, first of all, too small to mount real motors in. He's top heavy, he's a lot stronger than he should be, and he moves in impossible ways with the drawn joints. In fact, if you look at these two adjacent frames, he actually gets new hands from one frame to the next. Stuff like this is a pain if you're trying to make a good, accurate replica. When you try to replicate something from a photo or video, the first thing you need is a known yardstick to determine scale. I used the picture where he's dragging the tray of butter, because butter sticks are a fixed size, right? Uh, no. As it turns out, this is the very first thing that I learned when I started doing research for this project. There are two different form factors for butter in the United States. Who'd have thunk it? West Coast sticks of butter are shorter, but I scaled the butter bot off of an East Coast butter stick, which is about 4.8 inches long. Once I had a yardstick, I transposed all the measurements to a screen trace and chose some nice round numbers for most sizes, like a half inch diameter shoulder or a two and a quarter inch face on a two inch head. I also knew that I wanted to use a door peephole for the eye, so that helped to inform the face design. I normally only use the bare minimum of CAD that I need, so for this project the entire butter bot was sort of roughed out in block shapes in Fusion 360, and then all the parts that needed to be CNC'd went to a different Fusion document for cam work, all the sheet metal parts were finalized in Adobe Illustrator, and all of the parts that I needed to turn on a lathe went straight to pen and paper, the old school drafting method. I started with his feet, if you can call them that. So for stability, his base is a solid block of aluminum. Steel would have been heavier, but it's a lot harder to machine, so I went with the aluminum. In fact, his entire body is aluminum because I can physically machine it. I started with bar stock and uh, sliced a big chunk off on the horizontal bandsaw and then squared up that box on a belt sander and put a slight chamfer on the edges. I drilled and tapped six holes for the drivetrain, and then it was time to move on to the wheels. The tread system rides on six brass shoulder screws, and the wheels were turned on a lathe. Before I start building, though, I've got to take an aside and talk about the lathe, because lathes are seriously awesome tools. So this is the lathe that I'm going to be using to turn most of the uh, round parts needed to make the butter bot. And lathes are really fun. If you imagine drilling a hole in something, except you're holding the drill still, and the thing that you're trying to drill a hole in is spinning as fast as the drill bit normally spins, that's exactly what a lathe does. In fact, you can do that if you put a drill bit into the tailstock. So they only make round parts, because what you do is actually mount your workpiece in this chuck. The workpiece spins very rapidly while it's mounted in this chuck and it spins past a very sharp cutter that's mounted on this tool post. In this tool post, you can move back and forth with these wheels. And every time that it goes around, you shave off a little bit of metal. I have not gotten to turn metal on a lathe since high school. I was on a first robotics team, and it is unbelievably satisfying to make metal parts by turning. I have uh, been working with this for just a couple weeks now, getting started making parts for the ButterBot, and it is unbelievably fun. The wheels are cylinders with an external diameter for the tread, an internal diameter for the shoulder screw, a groove in the outside to hold onto the tread, and a recessed end to contain the bolt head. 
all of the outer features were turned with a standard single point cutter, and the inner diameter was cut with a normal spiral drill bit. It's not the most precise tool for drilling holes, but I just wanted a loose sliding fit, so it was plenty good enough. The end hole was made with a larger bit, but unfortunately, because the lathe tailstock was having a problem at the time, I was just kind of pushing the bits around. Even so, I was able to get something usable to a moderate precision. Of course, the problem when you start machining is that even once you get one really nice part that you like, you've got to make five more. So, machining takes time. The wheels bolt to the base with these tiny brass shoulder screws, and of course I had to pay an extra dollar to match the color to the actual cartoon. So the, uh, the treads ride on top of the wheels that ride on top of the shoulder screws. And the treads were a lot of fun because they're actually 3D printed. I designed the tread to be a little too small for the wheelbase, so it would have to stretch to reach around the wheels. And then I printed it out of flexible NinjaFlex filament. This stuff is pretty crazy, because you print it out of a 3D printer and it's like super flexible once it comes off the print bed. It's basically a rubber. I made an attempt to dye the treads with fabric dye, but that only turned them blue. So I ended up actually leaving the treads soaking in pure India ink overnight, the day before Maker Faire. And that ended up working, but it was a bit extreme. The ButterBot's body and head were sheet metal parts made from 16th inch aluminum. Specifically, I use 5052 aluminum because it's easier to bend without tearing. Everything else was the common 6061 alloy. I glued properly scaled printouts to the sheet of aluminum and then cut out all of the pieces on the scroll saw. Most pieces needed a bit of touch-up work with a belt sander and some hand files, and then came the fun part. You may notice that these flat sheets really don't resemble a ButterBot body. He's 3D, and I cut all of these parts out on a flat 2D stock. So I had to take all of these cut parts to a metal brake and actually bend them into shape. The brake is like a giant clamp, except the clamp has an angle built into it. So when you put a piece of metal in it and close the jaws, the metal gets bent. This is how the entire body and head became 3D boxy shapes out of flat 2D stock. Of course, some of the pieces geometrically didn't fit in the brake for the entire bend, so I finished a few of the bends with a flat draw vise and some pliers. To assemble all of these small metal body parts for the ButterBot, I originally wanted to learn how to TIG weld, but then I realized that learning to weld by learning to TIG weld aluminum was probably a bit of a stretch. Uh, plus, it would have been really difficult to make all the welds in the really tiny little joints, and the welder went away. So instead, uh, I learned to braze metal, and uh, I used aluminum brazing rod to make all of my metal-to-metal -metal joints. Brazing is basically just like soldering, except the melting point is higher, and it's intended to be structural instead of electrically conductive. You preheat all of the pieces with a torch, and then let the hot aluminum melt the brazing rod that you apply from a stick. So I discovered that it's very difficult to close large gaps this way, but if all the conditions are right and your surfaces are well prepared, you can get a pretty strong joint. I used the same technique to assemble the ButterBot's arms and face, except those pieces weren't hand cut from sheet stock, they were actually cut out on a CNC mill at the hackerspace. It's a Carvey mill, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's the most Binford Carvey in existence, because some of the awesome people at the hackerspace have replaced one of the axes' belt with a lead screw, so it's pretty rock solid, but I think they're actually going to do a full conversion soon and replace the other axis, and then it's going to be unstoppable. The awesome thing about computer-aided machining is that once you finally get good parts and you get all the settings right, you can make a whole bunch of them. So I used Fusion 360 to program and simulate the cuts. And there's lots of uh, failed cuts when you're working with a new material, like aluminum in this case, and uh, eventually you get the real thing. And then you just sort of send the designs over to the machine, then you can start mass producing them. After a bit of sanding, drilling a few extra holes, and squaring off some edges, the parts were ready to assemble. 
One of my original design criteria was to make the Butterbot posable as a stop motion armature. Since I couldn't fit motors inside of it, I figured I wanted to make it move somehow. So I designed all of the arm joints to be these three layer joints with one tapped hole, one slip fit hole, and one countersunk hole. With this design, only the middle layer rotates, and no matter how you move it, it'll never loosen the screw that's holding it together, because all of the friction is just between plates of metal. All the screw does is pull plate number one and plate number three closer together so that it pinches plate number two and basically slows it down when you try to move it. Of course, in order to rotate the shoulders and neck, you can't have a plate on both sides, so I had to improvise. I used a combination of nylock nuts, washers, and thrust bearings to ensure that no matter how much you spun the shoulder, the bolt inside wouldn't loosen up. If you look closely at the shoulder, it actually has two hinges in it, roll and pitch from the Butterbot's perspective. The roll axis has the same triple layer clamp as the elbow and wrist, except in this case, a notch was cut from a solid chunk of aluminum, so the plates one and three are basically the same thing. Creating this notch is a job extremely well suited to a manual mill with an eighth inch square cutter, but we don't have a mill at the hackerspace right now, so I butchered one of these parts trying to use a drill press as a mill, and uh, that didn't work. And then I burned out a Dremel trying to cut the notch that way, and that didn't work. And uh, then I ended up starting with a very dull hacksaw, and ended up just accepting the fact that I was going to have to sweat, and I filed the thing all the way down. It was not fun, but it ended up working. I also used the file to countersink the back of the shoulder for the bolt head, and make it look all nice and clean. The Butterbot's eye was a fisheye door peephole. It was the cheapest thing that I could think of to get a nice big lens. And because cutting round stock is so much more fun when it's spitting, I cut off the end of the peephole on the lathe before turning the actual eye socket. The socket started out as a big section of this super thick walled aluminum round stock that ended up getting two different internal diameters and two different external diameters in order to fit the peephole on the inside and match the design that I wanted on the outside. The eye socket got a small threaded plate brazed into it and a coat of black paint, and then the head could be assembled. So the Butterbot's entire head is actually held together with a single screw, which extends from the back of the head into the threaded plate at the back of the eye, and somewhere in the middle there it holds the face sandwiched in between them. The peephole was just glued into the eye socket with some cyanoacrylate superglue. At this point, all the metal parts were complete, so I sat down the Friday night before I was planning on leaving for Maker Fair, and I spent a few hours giving everything a nice 400 grit surface finish. I was planning on weathering the entire build to make it look sort of old and worn, but as it turns out, when you actually build something from metal, all you have to do to make it look worn is to clean it less. There's no fake surfaces or materials that need attention in order to look good. As a finishing touch, I added some 3D printed plastic nubs and glued a couple pieces of wire and an LED on top of the Butterbot's head, and then he was basically done. Since completion, he's had a, uh, a pretty exciting life. He got to help out with some homework, he uh, provided some witty comebacks over chat, and he even got to go to the grocery store and get some butter. It's been a very fun project and I've learned a lot. I'm also sure that you'll see a lot of these aluminum working techniques show up in many videos to come because I've sort of added them to my mental toolbox now when I start planning for a project. I want to take a very brief soapbox and say that this is probably the most instructional project that I've ever undertaken. So over the four months that I was working on this project, I learned how to use all of these new tools and techniques that I would not have learned had I not attempted to build a Butterbot. And in fact, these skills have already benefited me at work because I've been making some equipment for an SEM and have used some of these same fabrication techniques at work. So always sit down to projects that you don't have the skills to finish because if you want the final product, it forces you to learn new things. If people want plans to build this exact iteration of the Butterbot, then uh, I'll, I'll try to condense all of my sketches and CAD files and stuff into something relatively comprehensible that can go online. So let me know if you're interested in the plans and I'll try to make that available. Uh, aside from that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember to subscribe for more projects.